Nico right here as far as his color and his height. Uh, the height on this goat underneath adds some freckles on it, some skin, skin pigmentation. And um, as far as just the, the general look of a goat, the white bright goat is more attractive out there in the show ring. Uh, so in order to, uh, to enhance this goat, we'll try to cover up some of these white or these dark freckles in this pink skin, uh, the dark pigmentation that is coming out. We have this product here, the Livestock Whitening Powder, which is white powder in an aerosol can and it goes on wet. Um, so when we start applying it, we're going to do this first because it takes time for this to dry. Um, and we've got to make sure that we get enough on it. So he's going to start spraying. We'll work from head to toe, uh, spray both sides of the goat, and uh, just make sure that we get a good application of this white uh, powder on the goat, mainly in these areas uh, from hocks and knees up. I don't want to add a bunch of it down on the legs because later we're going to going to work on those legs, pull them up, and heat them, up. and. Uh, Anyway, so we're mainly going to work on the body of this goat. We don't want to get a bunch here up on the head. Most of our goats are either red-headed, tan-headed, black-headed. Uh, if you got a solid white goat, then we can put it all over. But uh, we're going to use this on the body. Put plenty on. As he comes around, we'll work on these spots on the side, on the side here. Uh, this product's great because we don't have baby powder going everywhere. And uh, you do want to check with your show rules. Some shows allow painting, allow powdering in goat shows, and some do not. So uh, you don't want to work yourself into, into a problem there at the show. And if they allow it, then I definitely recommend uh, using the, the livestock whitening powder just to enhance the brightness and whiteness of your goat. You'll put plenty, plenty on, especially down on top of our goat. Uh, on the tail, which the tail is one of those things that we don't try to bone up or, or add any other products to. Uh, but we're going to get some on the tail there and, and uh, the body. we got a few areas, like right here on the shoulder, there's a little more uh, freckle and skin pigmentation right here on the shoulder once you get this spot a bit better right on here. Whitening powder does go on clear. And so at first you think, well, it's not doing anything. You've got to give it time to dry. The drier it gets, the whiter it gets. And uh, so we'll go ahead and you can see it kind of building up on its body. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop there. We're going to give that uh, time to dry. And then once we're done with the legs, we come back, we may need to apply a little more powder. Uh, if, if need be on the body to, to cover up those freckles. But you can see right now it's getting wider uh, as I'm speaking here. All right, now we'll work into working on the legs. Uh, one of our favorite tools again is the roto brush, and this is an awesome tool. We're trying to, to get this leg hair to stand up, uh, and you really can't do it without the rotor brush effectively. Uh, what we want to do prior to applying any adhesive is pulling up on this hair. We're going the opposite direction of, of the way the hair is growing. On the front, it's going to grow and lay downward. On the back, you can see it swirling and going upward. Uh, so you want to change get your uh, drill that, that changes direction. Makes it a lot easier. Right here, we're going to pull this stuff down, and then we're going to move the front and pull it up. You can see just with that little bit of rotor brush right here, we haven't worked many hours on his legs, and just that little bit makes a huge, huge difference uh, as far as the volume and mass. If you've got one that's that's uh, finer bone, uh, this this will make a great difference if you work at it over time and, and uh, really get that hair to grow up and plump up.
you'll see there we're getting everything to pop pretty good. Um, as far as our adhesive options, um, to me the light and medium are what we use the most. The light, if you've got a goat that's really fine hair, super soft, you've been working on it, uh, this is your best option. A lot of times we use a medium adhesive uh, just simply because it has more holding and staying power. Uh, most of our goats, as they get older, this hair gets coarser. And so through the training process and really working on this, uh, a lot of times we go ahead and use the medium adhesive. Now one thing on goats, when, when we adhesive legs, um, again, check with your show rules to make sure that you can do that. Some shows do not allow any glues or adhesives in the legs or on the body, and so we want to make sure that we can. Um, but the main thing is you're wanting to achieve that look like you have not you applied any glue. We, uh, a little bit goes a long way. So sometimes you get in a bind and you just keep applying and adding more and adding more, and then it looks like a hedgehog instead of a goat leg. So we want to make sure um, we're going to do a light mist, a slicker brush works extremely well versus, you know, our fluffer coat. We use this on the body. Um, the gaps in the teeth are really wide, and so we start pulling leg hair with this. And we're going to get that, that hedgehog look where it becomes real coarse, um, and the hair starts matting together. So I prefer the slicker brush. Really fine and lots of teeth, and we can pull up on this leg hair. Again, the rotor brush has done a great job as far as fluffing that out. Um, one thing we don't want to do is, is overbrush or overcoat. Uh, we may come back and use the rotor brush, and then we're going to hit a light coat of adhesive. So we get some, some holding, holding power right here. And just slightly pop this hair out. With that roto brush, it's brought that hair up and out. And you go to dig it in with the comb, you're going to flatten some of that. And with this medium adhesive, it's got holding power to where that's going to work extremely well here on the front part of that rear leg. Very little combing involved. You've got some here on the sides. And one thing when we're pulling legs is, is a lot of our selection of livestock is done on the profile, especially when you get down to, you know, your top end, your top five, your top ten. They've turned them sideways. They're viewing them from the side. So I, I pay more attention from the side view as far as that width of bone going laterally uh, on the inside and the outside of the legs. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time here on the flat part of the bone trying to make it bigger around in circumference. You want to give that illusion that we're wider and bigger around. And if, if we work a lot here on the flat part of the bone and overdo it and mess up, then it's going to be like, yeah, he tried to bone those legs a little more. Uh, so we're basically going to try to pull that hair out this way uh, on the front part of the leg and on the back side of the leg and leave this a little more natural look. And that way, it just has that appearance that we haven't haven't tried to enhance bone at all. And this goat's just naturally bigger bone. Again, this hair grows up on the back side of that leg, so we're going to pull it down. We've got a little bit right in here that grows up grows down, excuse me, and you just kind of work it around. We've got that flared out, we'll give it a light coat of adhesive. Excuse me, use medium adhesive, but light coat of medium adhesive. leg boned out pretty well now and it, it has a more natural look I think uh, 
you know, the more you do, the more you apply on adhesive, and and uh, sometimes if we try to build too much, then it just gives that fake look. And as a judge, I want them to be natural. We want this big bone appearance. We want this big rugged look to them, but we don't want them to go in the ring looking fake. And uh, so right now, I think this is a good look for him in relation to his body, in relation to what this goat is. He's not overpowering in muscle. Uh, he's just a good, solid, complete one. And so that turns into a good, adequate bone size on him. Uh, if you're wanting to add more power, there's building products, Pro Enhancer, and we can build those legs up. But then again, you get that kind of fake effect and fake look. And I think that's a little bit too much in the goat ring. Uh, being that we don't do a lot of painting and, and a lot of extra uh, coloring on these goats, so we want to be natural. Um, if you look around the hoof line, we've left the hair there. You can come back and clip up some of this. I don't like trimming around the hoof line. We always talk about being bigger footed, bigger bone. And if you trim around that hoof line, then that's going to make that foot look smaller. So we leave all that hair on there, uh, limited, leave it a natural rugged look. We can touch it up just a little bit with some medium blending blades uh, to knock some of those long ends off.